Hi guys, this is Rukmini. Welcome to a Neural Prodi. If you have ever thought about joining engineering college, definitely you will have a dream of getting admission in IIT. Now, what is this IIT? Why should we join IIT? Every student will have a dream of settling in their life between the age of 23 to 25. One simple reason. If you join into IIT, it is a public autonomous institution of engineering. Why should I join IIT now? It provides you a good faculty, a bright future and a very good job. It ensures that after you are engineering, you are placed in a very good position. Now, what is the courses offered by that of IIT? They provide us graduation, post-graduation and a PhD. In today's, I'll be talking about the graduation level. Under graduations, we have three stages. That is, you can get an admission for IIT, IIIT or NIT. For all these courses, we have a very common exam, which is named by JEE. Now, what is this JEE all about? And how should we prepare for JEE? That is our next question. If you are joining for IIT, it is must that you have to clear JE Advanced. Now, people keep talking about JE Mains, JE Advanced. What is all about again? JE is being divided into two stages. We have JE Mains and JE Advanced. If you are very particular about joining IIT, you have to clear JE Advanced. All over India, we have 23 IIT centers which provides you a very good environment for the studies. JE Mains has two papers, paper 1 and paper 2. In paper 2, we have only the architecture where we will be studying something about aptitude and a drawing. Whereas in paper 1, we have three subjects, physics, chemistry and maths. All the three subjects has the same weightage. The complete three subjects exam will be conducted for three hours. According to the new pattern, for three hours you are supposed to solve only 75 questions. The pattern of physics, chemistry and maths is 20 plus 5. 20 questions are MCQs. For the correct answer, you will be getting plus 4. For the wrong answer, it will be minus 1. Whereas the 5 questions are explanatory, in this 5 questions, you will not have negative marking rather, you will be having awarded with plus 4 for a correct answers. Now, how exactly we are supposed to prepare for our JEE? For example, if I take chemistry, in chemistry we have 3 different parts. We have physical chemistry, organic chemistry and inorganic chemistry. Assume if I want to prepare for physical chemistry, I am very good in physics as well as maths, then you can rock on physical chemistry. In physical chemistry, the name itself suggests that it includes something about the physics and maths. So, we are the basic concentration should go only on the numericals. Numericals where you should be able to know about the formulas. We have around 30 chapters for both 11th grade as well as 12th grade. In that, you have to choose only the physical chemistry part and for all the three parts of chemistry, you have to refer NCRT textbook. Why NCRT textbook? People keep telling that you refer JEE, people keep telling that you refer R.D. Sharma, etc. But if you people are very thorough with NCRT textbook, that is more than sufficient because our CBSE student, state student, Syllabus is based on NCRT. So, the questions will be framed based on NCRT applications. For that, you people are supposed to know about the concept. So, the best method is read completely NCRT textbook and wherever you feel that the points are important, jot down the points and keep that in a separate sheet. So that before going to the exam, you can go through the formulas once. Now, we will try to solve some numericals based on the JEE pattern. We will have one numerical where we are supposed to find out the pH of a solution. 
generally if with respect to that of board paper when we are calculating the ph value we take ph equals minus log of h plus ion concentration or we even take as ph plus poh equals 40 these are the common formulas which we use for our board paper whereas in jwe they give us the value for pka assume this to be as 3.2 pkb 3.4 we are expected to find out the ph of the solution that is ph equals 7 plus 3.2 minus 3.4 divided by 2. The final value for pH will be 6.9. Generally, for solving one question, we get around 2.5 minutes. If you people are very familiar with the formula, you can solve this question in one minute. You will be saving 1.5 minutes, which you can utilize for our next question. Coming to the next question, in case of organic chemistry, as I told you earlier, remember only the function of a catalyst that would be more sufficient. For example, I have been asked for a question where I can convert an alkyne to a trans alkene which generally follows the reduction. Reduction in the sense you are going to provide the hydrogen. The tin in presence of HCl is one catalyst. Second is sodium in presence of liquid ammonia will be using sodium borohydride or we can use hydrogen in presence of palladium and barium sulfate which is commonly called as a Lindler's catalyst. For conversion of an alkyne to alkene I can use all these reagents because all are my reducing agents. But very particularly, they have asked for transalkene. Transalkene is nothing but where the groups will be diagonally opposite to each other. For this conversion, it is preferably used sodium in presence of liquid ammonia. Whereas rest of them gives me cisalkene, whereas only sodium in presence of liquid ammonia gives me transalkene. Coming to the next part of chemistry that is inorganic chemistry. With respect to inorganic chemistry, the concentration is more on classification of periodic properties. If you study this chapter perfectly, you can answer all the questions in inorganic chemistry. Like, they may ask you one simple question. Name the element which has the minimum amount or minimum enthalpy of atomization. The option given is copper zinc, vanadium and Mn. What exactly is the enthalpy of atomization is the amount of energy which is required to convert a metallic crystal into a gaseous atom we call it as enthalpy of atomization. For thus you should be familiar with that of electronic configuration. For copper, we have electronic configuration 3D10, 4S1. Zinc has electronic configuration 3D10, 4S2. Vanadium has electronic configuration 3D3, 4S2. Mn has electronic configuration 3D5, 4S2. So to convert into an atom, I need to remove one electron. When you can remove one electron, when it is loosely bonded, 
then we can remove the electron. For example, it is a copper because we have only one unpaired electrons. After removing one unpaired electron, it attains the stability that is nothing but 3D10. Same thing is not the case with any of these.